Hi everyone and welcome to Billy Fitzgerald Golf and today I want to go over my five range tips to make sure that you're making progress and you're actually getting better and not wasting your time out here. So the very first one which is probably the most critical or most important is you need to make a workstation or at least have some sort of alignment tools or you can use your golf clubs to make sure that you're aiming where you think you are. I would say nine out of ten people are not aiming where they think they are because aiming in itself can be difficult. It takes practice because it's it's visually not what we see because we're not directly behind the golf ball so it takes practice and in order if we want something to happen out on the golf course we need to make it happen on the range first. So we're going to go over a few things to make us better on the golf course what we can do on the driving range here. So very first thing you can see I've got some sticks around here and I'm not saying that you have to have every one of these but it, at least I would say A and, and not everyone has this but you need to have a target that's the biggest thing you have to have a target when you're hitting into the into the driving range we do have targets out there the golf course looks nothing like this so when you get out there you have to simulate things that can put you under pressure even on the driving range so when you get out there you're more comfortable on the golf course so I've got a few few lines here so the the first stick right in front of my golf ball would be an intermediate target now all these lines are on my target line so there's a pin out there and it's and it lines up with with this line this ball this line this stick and then the the yellow noodle there they're all on my target line you would be shocked at how many people are aiming for right handers way to the right because that's what their eyes see so we have to make sure that you're lined up correctly so again what's on my target line is the face of the face of the club my golf ball and enter any intermediate targets I have so the more I can have the better the other thing that that we'll get into a little bit later in the video is that it's important for me to have sticks vertical as well so I can see the path of my golf ball once I get lined up right so to line up correctly and you can even use a, a golf club to set in front now, obviously when you would when you would set your golf club down you want to put the, the face out here so the ball doesn't hit the face and come back and hit you so for the grip here and then the face out there just for safety concerns but to how you line up is I would recommend if you're gonna have one stick I would put something in front of you and to make sure that that sticks lined up is that you can stand directly behind the ball and put the club up and up in front of you close your non-dominant eye and make the ball disappear and the target disappear that's how you know that your stick is lined up correctly so now that we have your stick lined up correctly now you can start to to aim the face of the club at an intermediate target which is pretty easy to do and now I've got you know a number of um, targets or intermediate targets on my line so it keeps training my eye I have to see this correctly because because it's the easiest way is, is not to see it correctly and then we have bad alignment out in the golf course so once I get I get properly set up now this stick it's you can see it's not directly on my on my toe line but this stick makes sure that my shoulders and my hips are lined parallel left to my target line because that's going to determine my swing plane and how the club works now if you like a little staggered stance some some people find it beneficial to have a little closed stance or a little open stance that's fine too that doesn't bother me but your hips and your shoulders need to feel like they're parallel left to this golf ball so now that you're lined up correctly the golf the golf ball is going to have a lot of truth you might not, not like what you see at first but that's how you have to get started you have to set up a workstation make sure that you're set up properly and then you can have feedback of what's going on with the golf ball so when you get out on the golf course we know what to expect so in other words if my golf ball starts left of this noodle or left of this of this orange stick I can see that right away I know I'm pulling the golf ball so all of a sudden it's a it's a path issue I'm not gonna get into every single issue with with what's going on with these alignments but clearly seeing how your golf ball is reacting with the correct alignment that's the first way to start again if your alignment is incorrect the ball's not giving you the truth and you, it's really hard to work on your swing with bad alignment where do you begin with that get yourself set up 
get yourself a workstation and then the golf ball is going to tell you exactly what's going on then you can start from there that's the first tip i have is get a workstation if you're really serious about getting better and the golf ball will have truth in it and you can work around it from there okay tip number two have a plan going in to your practice session so after you've set up uh, some alignment rods and make sure that you're you have a good workstation and you know where you're hitting your golf ball or at least where your target is uh, you set some sticks on the ground make sure that you have a plan of what you're working on make sure it's beneficial to you if that means taking a lesson from a PGA professional um, or maybe uh, that pro offers a, an online session get something that makes sense to you that's relevant and that is simple and that's one of the main things is keep this simple only work on one thing at a time if you start working on too many things your mind will get distracted you might even forget what you began with um, you know and I see a lot of this uh, a lot of times that we have too many things going on and we don't make it simple enough the other thing I would do is set a time limit so within your plan set a time limit maybe you have 50 minutes maybe you have 30 minutes and I wouldn't go shorter wouldn't go past and so that makes you start to get into a little bit of, of discipline so we stick with it and you know we don't wear yourselves out and you're not on the range all day long because we're going to get to a certain point where it's probably you know probably not good for you it's, it's we're probably you know taking too much out your your brain gets a little foggy and we have to move on the third thing that I would say with, within your plan and, and once you have uh, you know what you're going to work on I've got two clusters of balls here so usually when we're working on something we have a drill for it so what I would say is is be disciplined enough to, to hit five balls with the drill and then five balls with the regular swing so for instance let's say and, and I'll use this this is a very common mistake that let's say uh, what I'm working on is I've got the club way too inside and then now I've got to come over the top to rescue it and get it, get the face on the golf ball so one drill that would help me with that is to hinge the club up and feel what it's like to feel the face of the club above my hands and then swing back down so I may do five of those drills so I've got my balls my, my golf balls here so to make sure that I don't go more or I don't go less or I don't quit so again what I would do is, is get ready to go and I've got I'm gonna hinge back back here and then hit my ball I'm gonna do that five times and then what I'm gonna do is take the other five golf balls and make some regular swings and try to blend the two and go back and forth back and forth for a certain amount of time so again tip two: have a plan know what's going on set a time limit and have practice where you've got five golf balls with the drill or whatever you're working on and five golf balls with the normal swing that's how you blend it that's how you stay focused tip number three slow down your practice I promise you you're not going to get any better at full speed full swing drivers you may have a different thought but I'm telling you right now your golf swing is a reflex to that target out there so if you want to make a change you have to do it at a slow pace the golf swing is only a second and a half and your brain can only handle so much so you have to make this swing three four maybe five seconds if we're making a change and by the way for a change to really work it, it we almost have to overdo it it's actually easier to overdo it and then bring it back to where we want it to be in other words if I'm right here my golf swing and the change is right here it it's easier for me to feel it or it's easier for the process for me to go way over here than dial it back so the thing that I would say is that most of my practice when I'm when I'm trying to make a change and, and this is the first thing I would do is try to hit your seven iron 50 yards you know for me it goes about 170 175 yards so you can imagine the slowness of my swing that has to happen and the time that I have to take to hit this golf ball to only make it go 50 yards you know when I say that to most people they're saying well I can't do that well yes you can and it's the easiest way to learn and make a change because your mind can only handle so much so 
the first thing I would say is again we'll go to that we'll go we'll go to that example where it's way inside and then over the top how did the, what was the drill to fix that well what we talked about was a sevy drill where we hinge the club up and now the face stays stays more outside and so I can swing it from the inside so if I were to do that drill if that's what I was working on I would do the sevy drill first I would make practice swings and I would hinge it, hinge it up and swing it back and down. And that is how I would practice. That's the speed of how, how I would practice. So I'd hinge it up, swing it back, and swing it down. Now, I've done that drill a million times, and I still went slow with it so I can feel what the golf club is doing. So the other thing that I would do, again, is, is when you're done with that drill, is making some swings at full motion half speed. Again, trying to hit that 7 iron 50, 100 yards. So it looks something like this. So you can see that's very slow for me to swing. So once I get ready to go, and that's how you make changes. You have to slow down. There's no way that you're going to make a change at full speed. Again, it's just a reflex. Make some, some little smaller movements is one thing that you can do. The other thing is full motion, half speed. That's how you're going to get better. And then once you get that and you feel like you can hit you know, that 7 iron, 80 yards, you can hit that 9 out of 10 times, then you add 10 yards, add 10 yards until the swing is eventually probably gonna, gonna fall apart at a certain speed because you're not quite ready for it. So again, learn to hit a golf club, you know, a very short distance with a longer swing and put that in your practice. Well, that didn't work. I think I'll try something else. Tip four, stick with it. You have to realize that when you change something, this takes time. And usually what you're trying to do and what it looks like is not, or what you think it looks like is not the same thing. So use video. We all, we all have phones. They probably have a camera on it. You can get, uh, I know there's adapters for alignment sticks that you can record yourself uh, or get an inexpensive tripod, but you've got to see what you're doing. If not, because I know what I, what I think I'm doing and what it looks like, is very different so it's easy to give up on something even though we're probably not even doing it so make sure that you have a, a clear understanding of what's going on there's terrific apps out there that you can record yourself you can draw lines you can send it to your instructor I know personally I use the on form app is extremely helpful um, and it's a great way for me to communicate with my students so make sure that you stick with it because when you make a change, usually, for instance, let's say I'm coming into the golf ball, right? So that's my mistake. Now, as soon as I make that person not come into the golf ball, they end up topping it. Now, the swing got better, but the ball, the result was not better. Because usually, see, when they had to move into the golf ball, their arms had to trail in to get the face on the golf ball. So just because it doesn't work the first or maybe second try, you have to stick with it. That's what I see a lot of people get frustrated and they just give up on it, you know, after five minutes because it doesn't work immediately. There's a little bit more to it than that. You got to give yourself a chance. You got to give yourself a break. So again, film your swing, use, a form, use a, an app like on form. The other thing that I would say is use a T. Again, slow motion swings off a tee, because usually what we're first working on is club face and club path. So we're not quite worried about angle of descent. Plus, you want to give yourself a, a break a little bit so we see some results. Again, you're working on something, um, you know, and you're trying new things. So don't be so hard on yourself. Tee it up, get yourself a video, and really, really give it a chance. I know it's going to help you. Tip number five, simulate the golf course. So now I'm going to pretend like I'm on the first tee. I've got some boundaries out there, which are my fairway. I'm still going to use my alignment stick. You can see I've, I've taken away everything out, so I'm trying to simulate it as best I can. I still want to feel like this alignment stick 
uh, it gives me a good indication of where I'm aiming. So I've got my boundaries out there. I'm gonna go through my pre-shot routine. I've got my alignment stick to make sure that I get used to seeing what I need to see out onto the golf course, even when I'm on the driving range here. So I'll make some practice swings to get the feel. And then I'll set up, got my alignment stick, Okay, now I've got my range finder so I can get out a pin. I've got 160 to a tucked right pin. So I'm gonna hit cut eight iron. So now I'm gonna adjust my alignment stick to where I wanna go. Set one of my golf balls down and do the same thing. Now I'm starting to visualize the shot. I'm starting to make some practice swings of what I want to feel. I've got my alignment stick in front of me. So now all of a sudden the driving range is becoming much more realistic. So those are things that are happening out on the golf course that I can simulate here. And I can kind of tell what's going on with my golf ball. I can tell, you know, where I would be. So, and plus it makes me take a break. I'm not hitting the same shot over and over and over again. So I hope these five tips help. And it makes you a better player. It makes you a better practicer to take your business here and make the business out there much better. Like and subscribe to my channel, Billy Fitzgerald Golf. Want to take a live lesson from me or you have a question? Visit me at BillyFitzgeraldGolf.com. And thanks for watching.